Special Counsel Jack Smith just filed a brief before the United States Supreme Court on appeal from the Washington, D.C. federal criminal case against Donald Trump for Trump's attempt to overthrow the results of the 2020 election. Donald Trump had asserted absolute presidential immunity, which was denied by the district court federal judge Tanya Chutkin. Donald Trump then appealed that to the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. A three-judge panel, including a conservative judge, rejected and denied Donald Trump's claim of absolute presidential immunity. Donald Trump filed a petition for certiorari uh, before the United States Supreme Court, which they granted, meaning they agreed to hear it. Oral argument will take place on April 25th for the Supreme Court to hear oral argument and then rule on the issue of Trump's assertion of absolute presidential immunity. So special counsel Jack Smith's filing is the position of the United States government why Donald Trump should not have absolute presidential immunity, why it is utterly absurd and frivolous for Donald Trump to claim that he can order SEAL Team 6 to kill a political opponent and get away with it. I also want to mention on this video as well, there was another important filing before the United States Supreme Court on Monday as well, an amicus brief, which is a friend of the court brief. Amicus brief is Latin, and it means a friend of the court brief, uh, submitted by a third party, in this case, former top retired military officials who wrote to the United States Supreme Court about the dangers of allowing a president or former president to order the uh, military generals and military infrastructure to commit crimes like murder or attack political opponents based on the military hierarchy and how that could basically destroy troop readiness and is fundamentally at odds with our civilian-led military system here in the United States and is more akin to what you see in authoritarian regimes abroad. The fact that we even had to have former top retired military leaders write that just tells you the dismal state of the Republican Party and it's a very dystopian thing that that's needed. Now, going back to special counsel Jack Smith's filing, let me show you some of the parts that I found most compelling right here. Special counsel Jack Smith explains that federal criminal law applies to a president. Petitioner Trump suggests that unless a criminal statute expressly names the president, the statute does not apply. That radical suggestion would free the president from virtually all criminal law even crimes such as bribery, murder, treason, and sedition, and that is unfounded. That rule finds no support in this court's decision, nor is it supported by opinions of the Department of Justice, which have instead construed the statutes to apply to the president unless doing so creates a serious risk of infringing the president's constitutional powers. You know, I wanted to read that to, that part for you because the fact that special counsel Jack Smith has to say in this brief before the Supreme Court, Trump is asking y'all for the power to murder, the power to commit treason and sedition, and claims that that is subject to absolute presidential immunity. It's very, very, very kind of clear and uh, un in stark terms that Special Counsel Jack Smith is putting that into. Now, Special Counsel Jack Smith in his filing also explains that Federal Judge Tanya Chutkin, as well as the D.C. DC Circuit Court of Appeals, got it right by finding that the history, text, structure, and pragmatism, um, when you look at the United States Constitution, certainly does not support any claim for absolute presidential immunity. And, you know, one of the aspects that I liked about what Special Counsel Jack Smith said as well is that even if this court even if you ultimately were to find that a president was in a former president was entitled to some immunity from criminal prosecution for official acts that principle does not preclude trial on this indictment that we brought here first the specific form of criminal conduct charged here 
efforts to subvert an election in violation of the term of office clause of Article 2 and the constitutional process for electing the president does not justify any form of immunity. Second, the private conduct that the indictment alleges is sufficient to support the charges. Thus, even if liability cannot be premised on official acts, the case should be remanded for trial with the district court to make evidentiary and instructional rulings in accordance with this court's decision. Petitioner could seek appellate review of those rulings, if necessary, following judgment. In other words, following conviction. So basically, Special Counsel Jack Smith saying is, let's be clear. No former president at all should be entitled to absolute presidential immunity. That conduct inherently falls outside the outer perimeter where you could ever give any type of immunity for. However, if you, the Supreme Court, believe that there are some circumstances under criminal law that a former president could assert absolute presidential immunity, even if you reach that conclusion, as applied, as it relates to the facts here, this involves private conduct by Donald Trump. This has nothing to do with Article II powers of a president or former president. This is Donald Trump trying to interfere with the results of a free and fair election, doing that in Trump's capacity of campaigning, of Donald Trump also using private citizens, people outside of the White House, to engage in this crime, private attorneys, private actors, private co-conspirators, criminal co-conspirators, that's outside the province, that's outside of the scope of any immunity, even if you somehow recognize that, that there's immunity here at all. Send this to trial, let us try this case. If Donald Trump gets convicted, then he can come back to you and he can whine and complain at that point in time. Just to remind you, the question presented by the Supreme Court was whether and if so, to what extent does a former president enjoy presidential immunity from criminal prosecution for conduct alleged to involve official acts during his tenure in office? Tenure in office, just to give you the structure of special counsel Jack Smith's filing, and it's a 66 pager, so don't worry, we're going to condense this and keep this in summary fashion. Jack Smith says, a former president lacks immunity from federal criminal prosecution for official acts during his presidency. A claim of absolute criminal immunity for a former president's official acts violates the established separation of powers principles. In other words, if you're a former president, if so and to what extent? No extent. You never have absolute immunity from criminal prosecution if you are a former president. Jack Smith goes on to say, history supports the conclusion that former presidents are subject to prosecution for official acts. Criminal immunity for a former president enjoys no support from the case Fitzgerald's recognition of civil immunity. You know from watching the Midas Touch Network that we have explained that there is this concept of presidential immunity from civil lawsuits as long as the conduct by the president or former president while they were in office was in the outer perimeter of their official conduct. So for example, the Fitzgerald cases, Fitzgerald v. Nixon, was a wrongful termination lawsuit by a whistleblower against former President Nixon. The Supreme Court in that case dismissed the case, finding, uh, dismissed the lawsuit against Nixon, finding absolute presidential immunity from that case because it was the task of presidents to hire and fire executive department employees and therefore the firing fell outside the outer perimeter. And so that logic, special counsel Jack Smith is saying, does not apply in the criminal context at all because this conduct is outside of the scope. It involves crimes, 
People are being indicted. Grand juries are hearing this and they are indicting the former president for trying to upend our constitution, to destroy our constitutional structure. You shouldn't get constitutional immunity and protections, implied protections when you're trying to destroy the constitution. And to be clear, there is nothing in the constitution that provides for immunity at all. In the civil context, the Supreme Court found this doctrine to be an implied type of uh, uh, doctrine. Then special counsel Jack Smith says, um, the interest in applying federal criminal law to all persons is compelling. No one is above the law, even former presidents. Robust safeguards protect against the risk of improper prosecutions. So in the Fitzgerald case, which involves like civil lawsuits and the idea that kind of regular people can file civil cases, there's a grand jury process that's taking place here. Um, and a grand jury would be the one doing the indicting. Um, Jack Smith goes on to say how federal criminal law applies to the president. The impeachment judgment clause does not make Senate conviction a prerequisite to criminal prosecution of a former president. That's the argument that Trump tries to raise over and over again, that the impeachment judgment clause requires that there be a conviction in the Senate in order to bring a criminal charge when in fact the impeachment judgment clause says the opposite, that there could be criminal prosecution outside of it. And that's why a impeachment is kind of it, its own separate thing, which remember in the impeachment uh, of Donald Trump, the argument made by Donald Trump's lawyer Remember what Trump's lawyer said before the Senate, and one of the reasons there was not a conviction, and this is going to be brought up in the oral argument, Trump's lawyer said that you shouldn't impeach here, we should leave that to the criminal courts to decide that this is a criminal case and it should not be dealt with in the Senate because Trump can be tried and convicted in criminal courts. And now... What are Trump's lawyers arguing? Well, yeah, we we lied to the Senate then, and in fact, you needed to go through and a, a conviction in the Senate before a criminal charge can be brought. Um, and and Jack Smith's pointing out the absurdity of that. Um, Jack Smith goes on to talk about how Trump's conception of early Supreme Court cases like Marbury and Madison lacks merit. And then the last argument was the one I, I led with, which is even if you find some sliver of absolute presidential immunity could exist, it doesn't exist here. It's not Donald Trump's view that you could hire SEAL Team 6 to kill political opponents. That's not what it is. It's not Donald Trump's view that he can overthrow the results of a free and fair election. This is not the type of conduct that, um, this is not the type of conduct that would merit any form of immunity uh, either. And that this court, the Supreme Court, should remand this case back to the district court and that we should... Let's go. We're ready for trial, is what special counsel Jack Smith saying, too. I mentioned this brief that was filed by the top retired military generals. And if you'll allow me just to read this one portion, I'll be very brief about it. I think it's important that you hear it. Remember, they filed an amicus brief, former top retired generals to the United States Supreme Court. And here's what they're saying. Allowing a president to issue orders requiring subordinates to commit criminal acts or omissions would wreak havoc on the military chain of command and result in an erosion of confidence in the legality of presidential orders. It would also create the potential for disparate interpretations of the duty to obey orders, thereby risking military discipline. While the duty of obedience does not extend to patently illegal orders, an order issued by the president himself would exert a powerful gravitational pull, and thus, even if of dubious legality, would create uncertainty in the ranks, holding everyone in the chain of command, including the president, to the same principles of accountability under the criminal laws of the United States is essential for assuring the legality of military orders and for providing the reassurance for all levels of the chain of command of that legality. Powerful words indeed. So there you have the two filings, one by special counsel Jack Smith, another an amicus brief 
by former top retired military generals to the United States Supreme Court. Tell me what you think. Hit subscribe. Let's get to 3 million subscribers together. And thank you for watching. It's Ken Harbaugh with the Midas Touch Network. The film Against All Enemies, which I co-produced with Ben Micellis and this network, has won awards around the world for its up-close portrayal of America's insurrectionist movement. It premieres in the U.S. on March 29th on Amazon and Apple TV. Go to AgainstAllEnemiesFilm.com or click the link below. But don't just watch Against All Enemies. Tell your friends about it. It's one more way to hold accountable those who threaten our democracy. Thanks Midas Mighty, let's use our power well.